started with the scriptures today. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Uh, Father, we just want to thank you for this time. We just pray for your blessing, for an encouragement for everybody here. May our faith be strengthened. Uh, may our time here just be uh, a time of encouragement. And as people go out to live their life IRL or in, online, I just pray whatever they face this week, Father, that they'll just grow stronger and stronger each day. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the scriptures for today. Like I mentioned before, uh, we'd like to read one section of the Bible every week, and we're working uh, working through the book of Mark. Mark was a disciple of Jesus. He wrote down the things that he saw and heard. So we're going to read from Mark chapter 5 today. And just to give you a little bit of a heads up, this is an intense portion of scripture. Uh, I don't know. We just got past Halloween and I don't know if you've seen horror movies or something like that. This, I'm going to be honest with you. This passage of scripture has a little bit of a horror feel to it. Usually the scripture we read is about, you know, Jesus healing people and the, a message of love and faith and, you know, a bunch of different things. But this one has a little bit of a dark turn. But with that being said, there is like a what's that phrase? There's a silver lining in the cloud. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a point. Uh, to be made through this kind of like horror film. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. And I'm going to read here in just a second. And then just for Twitch's sake, I'm going to turn off the uh, global chat there so you guys can uh, see what's going on here. All right. So now leading up to this, uh, Jesus was um, on the other side of this lake. And so he got into a boat and he had been teaching people to this point. He'd been healing people that were sick. Um, he had been helping people that were injured. And he had been teaching them about the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of heaven was like. And he was painting that picture for them. And then he got in a boat. So here's what happened. Uh, this is Mark chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh, when they arrived, and, and they is talking about Jesus and his disciples. That's the characters in, in the story. So we have the Jesus and his disciples. And we have this crazy demon-possessed man we're going to talk about in a second. So uh, verse 1. When they arrived at the other side of the lake... A demon-possessed man ran out from a graveyard just as Jesus was climbing out from the boat. So you got to picture this. You got to put yourself in the middle of, of this story where you're on a boat and you cross to the other side. And as soon as you get out of the boat, this crazy man uh, from the cemetery just comes like charging, right? I don't think he had a hatchet on him, but he comes charging at them. And I think that as far as we can tell, Jesus and his disciples had not been in a situation like this at all. And so this was very unique. This was very different. And I think it probably uh, freaked them out quite a bit. Uh, but let's read a little bit about this guy because there's something. Oops, I think I, I got to put my. Uh, I got to put my chat back on to put the uh, there we go. Well, let's read about this guy. So this man, this crazy man lived among the grave gravestones. So he lived in a cemetery. And had such strength that whenever he put, whenever he was put into handcuffs and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the handcuffs from his wrist and smashed the shackles and walked away. No one was strong enough to control him. All right. So this story is crazy right off the bat here in, in Mark chapter five. Jesus gets on a boat with disciples. They get out to the other side. Crazy man comes charging at him. And so much so that they found out that this they used to try to shackle up this guy, but the guy would just, you know, break the shackles that were on his legs or on his feet. He would just, just rip them off. Uh, and no one was strong enough to control him. Basically, this guy was out of control. Now, let's pause here because I think Matthew is trying to paint a picture. Uh, I don't know if there's, there's, there's any artist out there. And the picture that he's trying to, to paint in this section of uh, scripture that we're reading is those of us and people that we know or even ourselves where we feel like something is so broken, so dark, so damaged that there's nothing anybody can do about it. And Mark wants to give us hope to say that no matter how damaged, how broken, how dark something is in, is in your life or someone else's life, God's power is above that. God's power is greater than that. So here's the next uh, passage of scripture in verse five. It says all day long, 
and through the night he would wander among the tombs and in the wild hills, screaming and cutting himself with sharp uh, pieces of stone. Uh, when Jesus was still afar out on the water, the man had seen him and had to run to meet him and fell down before him. So what we learned from this guy was that he was in the hills screaming and cutting himself with a sharp stone. I don't have a, a, a rust stone on me or I'd kind of pull that out. If somebody has a stone, throw it my way. Um, and just as an illustration. Uh, oh, thank you. Perfect. All right. So this guy, sharp stone, and he would just cut at himself. He'd be screaming and uh, with sharp pieces of stone. So this guy was pretty broken. Maybe in our human terms, we would say he was broken beyond repair. There was nothing that we could do for him. But then Jesus comes, and when he was still far out, the man saw him and ran to meet him and fell down before him. And I love that. This is kind of like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I don't know if you've heard that term before, Dr. Uh, uh, Jekyll, Miss, uh, Mr. Hyde. So on the one side, he was a crazy man, cutting himself with stones, um, just kind of just a raging maniac running all around. And on the other hand, we see that he came to meet Jesus. He ran to meet him, not to attack him, not to fight him, not to scream at him, but to meet Jesus. And he fell down before him. And I think that's a beautiful thing. The side of him that even though it was very broken, still wanted to be helped out, still wanted deliverance. Well, in verse seven, this is where it's so we're talking about a little bit of a horror film here. In verse seven, it says, then Jesus spoke to the demon within the man and said, come out, you evil spirit. It gave a terrible scream, shrieking. What are you going to do uh, do to me, Jesus, son of the most high God? For God's sake, don't torture me. I don't know. It's probably not even close to some of the things like when the zombies are running around here and they're like making their noises. <laughs> you kind of go like, oh, shoot, zombies are here. Uh, this is probably worse than that. That terrible scream um, that these uh, this demon was doing. And what's in interesting is here is they were afraid of Jesus. This darkness was afraid of Jesus. Um, let's go to the next passage of scripture here. There we go. Verse nine. Um, and it's kind of a weird moment. Jesus was like, what is your name? Jesus asked. And the demon replied, Legion, for there are many of us here within this man. Dude, that's I'm, it's freaky. I'm not going to lie. Then the demons begged him again and again to not send them to some distant land. So I don't really know exactly what that was all about. Maybe you guys have some thoughts about that. But that's they were afraid of Jesus. It just shows that God's power was over this darkness, over this dysfunction. It didn't have power over God. I think it's a significant thing. All right, just when you think it couldn't get creepier. All right, buckle up. Now, as it happened, there was a huge herd of hogs or pigs rooting around on the hill above the lake. Send us into those hogs, the demons begged. And Jesus gave them permission. Again, Jesus and God is over the power of darkness. Then the evil spirits came out of the man and entered the hogs and the entire herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned. Can you imagine like being there watching this from from beginning to end? Let's pretend like you and I are like one of the disciples. We're just hanging with Jesus. Everything's kind of been pretty normal up to this point. We get in a boat. We go to the other side. Crazy man comes out running at you, screaming, cutting himself with rocks. And then you saw this moment where Jesus starts speaking to the demon and then he casts the demon out. I bet as a bystander, that would have been like blood curdling, like, you know, the hair rising on the back of your neck type of feeling. I feel like that's what happened. And then when the um, the pigs ran down the steep hillside and into the lake and drowned, can you imagine the sights and sound of that? We're talking, this is all the signs of like a horror film right here. <clears throat> Just freaky stuff. When we go to the next passage of scripture, we see something interesting and something beautiful. This is like the, the silver lining in the cloud, the light at the end of the, the dark tunnel. It says the herdsmen fled to the nearby towns and countryside, uh, spreading the news as they ran. Everyone rushed out to see for themselves and a large crowd soon gathered where Jesus was. But as soon as they saw the man, this is the crazy man, by the way, 
sitting there, fully clothed and perfectly sane, they were frightened. So there's a bunch of stuff we could say about this passage, but I really want you to focus on right here, uh, fully clothed and perfectly sane. This is what Matt Mark is trying to get to the bottom of, is that no matter how dark, dysfunctional, discouraged, depressed, no matter what, there is something that's greater than that. And this passage of scripture maybe doesn't apply to us literally, like, okay, we don't have pigs and we're not demon possessed and we're not living in a cemetery. But the point isn't the literal nature of the story. It's what are we, you, you and I can learn from that. And what we can learn from this is that God is greater than the darkness, dysfunction, depression. He has power over all of that. And for some of us who need that help, really, really need that help, help is on the way. God wants to help us in our darkness, in our dysfunction, in our discouragement. To the point where this man was fully clothed and perfectly sane. Uh, let's call him Jimmy. Jimmy was crazy one day and then calm the next. And that freaked people out because they knew Jimmy with his hair all freaking like uh, coming out the side and then uh, with dirty clothes. But now they saw Jimmy and he was just relaxing, uh, smile on his faith, face, his hair was combed. I mean, I think that it really freaked them out. And then the story kind of continues to, to another level. Here's a couple more verses and then we'll be done for today. It says here, those who saw what happened were telling everyone about it. Like, dude, did you see Jimmy? Jimmy was crazy one day and now he's calmed the next. And the crowd began, this is interesting, and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. <laughs> I don't know if it was just too much for them for one day, because that was quite a bit. I don't know why they were like, get out of here. You'd think they would celebrate that. But they were just kind of like disturbed. So he or Jesus got back into the boat. Uh, the man who had been possessed by the demons begged Jesus to let him go. But Jesus said no. Now, that sounds kind of weird, but here's the reason why. And here's the last uh, part of the verse for today. Uh, Jesus said, go home to your friends, he told them, and tell them what wonderful things God has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the 10 towns of that region and began to tell everyone about the great things Jesus had done for him. And they were all struck by his story. So there must have been 10 towns in that region, um, in that area, uh, places where um, you know, town A and town B, but they probably knew who Jimmy was because as crazy as Jimmy was, they probably heard about him. And now Jimmy was coming to their town, telling them that everything was OK and that God's power was over the darkness, was stronger than that. And so here you see in my final thoughts for today. In 20 verses, I'm sure there was a lot of details to be had, but in 20 verses, Math, uh, Mark writes this really short story that seems a little crazy, a little like horror, but I think the point that he's trying to tell us years later is that no matter how dark or discouraging or hopeless the situation is, there still is hope because God is greater than that. God has power over, the, over that and help is on the way. And that's an encouragement to us because even though we might not have pigs or gravestones, we got issues that we have to deal with. We have darkness that we have to face. We have difficulties that we have to you know, contend with. And, and Mark says, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope for the worst of it. This Jimmy guy was the worst, crazy. And this story says that there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing that is um, out of God's reach that's too broken, that's too messed up. You say, Pastor, I got messed up stuff. There's nothing too messed up where God can't come in and bring help into your life. All right, my friends, that is the end of church uh, for today. I'm going to say a closing word of prayer. And I hope that um, you just kind of take these words with you throughout the week. And then after I pray, uh, we'll take a picture up here on stage, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, yeah churches. Oh, and, and then we like to, uh, after the, the prayer, we like to shoot our guns in the sky. And that lets uh, everyone know church is over. But uh, let's play, pray first. Um, God, we just pray for everyone in here. Man, hopefully everyone's doing great. Uh, there's no problems, no darkness, 
no dysfunction, everything's going perfectly well. Uh, but for those of us that have things in our life where we feel like, man, there is no hope, it's messed up, it's too broken, it's, it's just so jacked up, God, I just pray that these words from Mark would encourage us and realize that there is always hope, help is on the way, help us not to lose our faith, help us in our dark and dysfunctional moments to realize God's there, he's coming, help is on the way. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen.